And there we go again. It's time for game number two here in the JDL Season 3. Power Rangers vs. Screen Squad. And yes, it took a while uh, to figure out because, I don't know, someone leaked the password again. There were thousand, like thousand people joining the goddamn lobby. And we had to sort out who was taking which cast slot. And my cast slot was taken by some, I don't know, Russian guy. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. I'm in the lobby again. And... Screen Squad vs. Power Rangers, the first game, Screen Squad had an amazing start and I was actually thinking that they might pull it through. Like a really brave pick with the, uh, say it, with the tusk. And it worked out, the The trident was really good, but unfortunately the, the morph couldn't really take too much out of this lane. And later in the fights he was also very fast focused down. The Lycan on Moon, he found a lot of farm even though his lane wasn't good at all and I don't know, except for some little mistakes on FNG side with the Shallow Crave. After that he did amazing jobs, he kept those people alive and the sustain on the team was just sick. Shadow Weave, Urn, Mech, Arcanes and the Lifesteal as well as a lot of armor then coming out with a fast AC on the DK. That was yeah. enough and they kept the death ball just rolling, rolling, rolling and Screen Squad in the end they had no chance but to give up because they would have lost their Rex anyway and I don't know. Let's see. We have to see how it's going. It is, of course, a good chance for Screen Squad to come back here. And they want to come back with a Faceless Void and Mirana pick. So I definitely liked it already. We have a Faceless Void. Maybe it's a Utility Void going into the offline. Mirana, of course, providing Moonlight Shadow. On the other side, we have a Razor in, like, TI mode. And Skyrath Mage. Well, I definitely like it. Um, the Skyrath Mage is such... I definitely like it to pick it up here in this case because Skyrath Mage on the other side, that would really hurt. Faces Void plus Skyrath Mage equals a lot of damage. The Chrono plus one Mystical Flare, so that's minus one or minus two each and every time the Chrono comes out. So, but let's see how Power Rangers wants to counter this Chrono anyway. We have to look at the bands a bit. Lycan, Panda, Doom and Tidehunter were the first bands. So Screen Squad, they learn out of the first game not letting the Lycan through. On the other side, they don't want to face a Tide Hunter, even though the Tide Hunter did a, a nice job for Power Rangers, but of course picking him up is not the best chance here. The second bun stage is also already through, and we have, okay, Rave King, the Spectre being picked, uh, the, uh, the Spectre, I say the Vengeful is being banned here, just for the good reason that you can swap in and out of the Chrono, and that makes it, of course, yeah, stalling some time till the Chrono is down, so I definitely understand this ban. On the other side, Ember Spirit being banned for Power Rangers. They don't want to have the Ember Spirit as a mid hero, for example. And, well, Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon. Okay. I actually thought that Shadow Demon might be a good pick for Power Rangers because with a disruption in the Chrono, I don't know, would have been interesting. Would really be, be interesting. But now, both teams are picking up a stun. And this is now really getting interesting. Like we have a Fisher stun and we have Sand King here. Definitely interesting. I like the Sand King of course a bit more in synergy with the Faces Void because Chrono up, Epicenter being cast and the Epicenter doesn't care about the Chrono. It's ticking through. So if there's a huge Chrono plus the Epicenter, that really hurts. Plus a follow up arrow and let, let's see what else is there to come. Someone is writing, yes, they learned, they never let the enemy get Lycan, ever. Yep, yeah, this time, I guess they learned from game number one here, for sure. But let's see, I mean, fourth pick, and to be honest, like, Screen Squad, I expect some more damage coming into, uh, into the Chrono, but... I'm actually, by judging by the current picks, I think that might even be a Faceless Void in the safe lane. Not like in the other games we saw where he is pretty much in the offline. But yeah, another counter coming out. A Beastmaster. That's interesting. So now we have already a Fisher stopping the Void. We have the Beastmaster now with a Primal Roar. Which doesn't care about BKB and that makes it so strong. The only problem is it's at the moment the, the only one who can actually stop a Faceless Void when he uses the BKB. Therefore, I don't know. Like... He really, he really has to get that Beastmaster in the Chrono, kill him maybe first. And besides that, of course, Beastmaster giving nice vision all over the map with the Hawk. The ball can be really, really annoying when you're being chased. And, I don't know. Let's see. The Beastmaster is going to play a very, very important role in this game. So we have to see how he p 
performs. The Death Prophet is coming out. Fourth pick here for Screen Squad. And I don't know, with the Death Prophet, the Exorcism coming out, that's definitely interesting. It's a lot of external damage coming in the, into the Chrono if both is like nicely aligned. But I don't know. We saw yesterday a game where we had a Faces Void plus a Death Prophet, and somehow they didn't get the execution through. It was a Peruvian game, I have to say, and the team who had the draft, the draft was nice, but the execution was horrible. But here we have two very experienced and, and teams that really stick to a nice execution. We saw that the last game. So I really think Screen Squad has a good draft here so far. The Beastmaster, only thing that can really stop them from yeah getting wrecked inside of the Chrono. Last bans are coming out. Ancient Apparition being banned by Power Rangers for obvious reasons. And okay, Kinger. that I did not understand. That I absolutely did not understand. The, the Lone Druid being banned rather than the Tinker for example because the Tinker is being picked up now and I, I said already you have a nice vision always with the Hawk and not, not just the Hawk giving vision it's also like a nice TP platform for the Tinker which means now you can actually scout out with that Hawk all the time Tinker is just TPing on it and then just ganking you the hell everywhere you are it doesn't really matter he scouts out Roshan, Ancients, enemy jungle so wherever the hawk is the Tinker might as well come in and then of course with the magical burst the only question is now is that a safe lane Tinker and they put the razor in the mid or is that Death Prophet versus Tinker in the mid might be interesting we're gonna see that in just a second if Shachlo is gonna pick up the Tinker but I actually think they they put the Tinker in the mid on, on Shachlo because Moon I don't think Moon is going to play a Tinker. Moon is going to stick to that Razor. Either way, one more pick away till the game starts here. One more pick for Screen Squad. And it should be... I don't know if they should go more greedy. Because Death Prophet is already a nice push. The face is void. Okay, the Chrono. But then again, might not be enough against this team. <laughs> Titan would have been, of course, a nice follow-up. Enigma, we see sometimes teams that go for Enigma. Like, that would be a jungle element for Screen Squad. And they had a follow-up uh, Black Hole. And if you guys remember the TI, we had, for example, EG playing the Chrono plus Black Hole combination, which is pretty strong. If you do it right, of course, the execution and the timing has to be absolutely on spot. But I don't know, if, uh, the Enigma is also like a bit less laning presence and therefore maybe not so good. I don't know. Like, it, it could be a lot. It could be another Roma, it could storm be another Core. Spirit. And it is the Storm Spirit. Okay. And that puts Static C in a utility void. Yes, this is a utility void on Faceless Void in the offlane. Necro is going in the mid with a Death Prophet, and it's a safe lane Storm Spirit on Batman here. Shachla is going to pick up the Tinker, which means he's going to be in the mid. Moon is playing the Racer then in the safe lane. So, yep, that's yep, almost 90% how I expected it. I didn't see the Storm Spirit coming, I have to admit that. Like, Storm Spirit was, was definitely not the first of my guesses, and I don't know. Let's see. And someone is writing GG Tinker. No, it, it's not GG, but as I said, I, I would have banned him just after I saw the Beastmaster. My first thought was really, okay, a Tinker plus the Hawk, that could be an evil, evil plan. But let's see. We have one minute time till the game starts, and we take that time to just introduce the team. We have Batman here on the Storm Spirit. Then in the mid, we're going to have Necroman on the Death Prophet. Also heading top is Slander on the SK. Screen himself on the support, Mirana. And last but not least, we have Static C on the Utility Void in the offline. All he needs is pretty much XP. But of course, if it works out all well, he also gets some nice CS. And there will be the Beastmaster waiting for him. Chisercat is going to be here solo in that lane. Aggressive tri lane heading towards top at the moment guarding the rune. We have Avan G on the Skyrim Mage, J4 on the Earthshaker. Moon is going to play the Razor, as we already said. And of course, Shachlo, the Tinker. And he, I think this is the first time I see him on Tinker. Like, I've seen Shachlo many times already, casted this guy, I don't know how many dozens of games, but Shachlo, Tinker, first time for me. So, I definitely look forward to this. Either way, we have like a little race for the runes. Bottom, we have two people in range to actually get it. And top, you don't want to get close to this screen. You don't want to get close to this. Oh, he oh he didn't get the deny out. There's actually the Fisher, but he can go if he wants to. He can pick up Leap, and he's just away. So, but J4 still going for a bit. Maybe he gets a harass. I mean, he has a bit more movement speed. He has 10 more movement speed. But now, Batman coming in as well, as well as Slander. So, 
Okay, nope, they're all hiding back. I mean, the creeps are, are meeting anyway, so they don't want to miss any CS, therefore they should go back ASAP. After all, Moon is supposed to be the farmer, and oh, we have an instant smoke here by Screen Squad. They want to go for the Tinker early gank, and to be honest, this might actually work out. There's no wards, no nothing, nobody who can scout it out, and all you need is Crypt Swarm, okay, level 1, some Harass is already coming through. But the problem is the creep wave is directly under the tower right now, so it's a bad timing, and the new creep wave also come in there. So they have to, if they do something, they have to do it right now. Now they're going in. Level one burst strike, really, really low, low, low range. Is there an arrow flying? The arrow is coming, but oh, it's actually gonna connect. This is our first blood. It's the first blood here for Necroman with the crypt swarm. He's gonna get it beautifully done. I didn't think. Uh, he's gonna make it, but Slander, a nice pickup here because he has the boots of speed with brown boots. Yep, definitely working out. Definitely amazing gank as such, and yep, I definitely like this. This was, this was really good. In the top, well, we have Static C now rotating in here, and he doesn't really care about the Static Link at the moment. He's just getting soaked out of uh, XP. And Batman rotated here against the Beastmaster, which. That, that, that's the funny part, it turns the things around because like uh, under normal circumstances it would have been ranged versus range top and melee versus melee bottom but now Chisel Cat facing the ranged and Storm Spirit, uh, Storm Spirit I say Razor like he can do so much harass on Zenix C. no point in backtrack yet so he has to be really really careful no harass yet by FNG though but let's see Chisel Cat, Chisel Cat might be uh, a gank target here. He's under the tower. He has only one point in axes, so that might be actually a good go. We have a level one burst strike here, and oh, they want to go for it. Is there? Yeah, the vortex is coming through. Oh, the arrow. Is the arrow gonna hit? No, there's no arrow coming. The arrow he was blocked by the boar or the hawk. I don't know which one it was. Yeah, I think it was the boar who blocked it, so he decided not to go for it. There was also a little fake TP. It got interrupted now. The Tinker. This is gonna be interesting. He has a 1-1 one, one build. Oh, he's going for screen. No, he's not going for screen. He's heading back. Slender has full HP as well as the Storm, so you really don't want to go for it. But in the meantime, we have Zedek Z dying here. FNG is gonna get that kill. And he's just hiding in the trees. Now they go for the tower and it should be safe to go out. Also doing a lot of pressure, of course, on this tower. Static Z coming directly back. But there is a new fissure in pretty much soon when this clarity is ticking through. So, oh my god. Like, Static Z not so happy after all, I think. This is this is why I don't understand the, the swap. I think the a tri lane top would have been more successful. But Screen Squad was more interested in... I know that ganking potential, and yeah, I mean, the two supports that are already on the way for getting more. Unfortunately, the Sand King he needs Spur Strike level two. The range is much higher, but let's see. In the Tinker in the mid would be a nice candidate. It's a low HP pool hero as such. I mean, he got the Knolls plus three free branches, which puts him, which puts him. Oh, we got it. Does he find the Spur Strike? Oh, the Spur Strike is coming, but there's the arrow. The action arrow is actually connecting, but the Sand King dies to the tower. That is. It's really unfortunate, to be honest, but they really decided to go for this, which I didn't quite understand, though. Like, it was just too close to the base. Here at the top, we have some side poles, and oh, actually, ZXC managed to steal the big neutrals, which is, of course, pretty good for him. Now, oh, <laughs> FNG getting the thunderclap of the Hellbear Smasher here. That's, of course, some nice harass done by the neutrals. In the end, it's 2-1. It's a bit less aggressive than the other game, but still, like... As soon as here the level 6 are coming out, we're gonna see a lot more action. Especially because the Storm Spirit is a lot more mobile, we have the Chrono, etc, etc. So, yeah, let's see. We have to also compare how the lanes are doing. 15 and 4 here on Shachlos Tinker. In comparison, we have 15 and 8. So some more uh, denies coming out here for Necroman, but overall they are pretty equal. In the bottom lane, Chisaka doing quite well. He's 11 and 0. So, Batman is 25 and 4, obviously winning here as a ranged hero, and also a lot of pressure on, on Chisel Cat, plus he has to be aware of all those ganks coming from the side. But in the end, yep, the Storm just doing quite well, and I don't know, Chisel Cat, he does exactly what he needs to do picking up XP. He has been around all the time, he didn't die, he's almost level 6, and with that Primal Roar, they can do a lot. In comparison, for example, the offlaners, ZXC here. He's only level 4, he's not even close to level 6 because he also died. So at the moment we have Chisicat being almost 2 levels ahead. And that really hurts. Now, time walk being used just to the like disjoint, the static link. And I don't know, it's... Like, I said...
this Beastmaster is gonna have like a huge impact and we might actually see that impact right now. There's no Mystic Flare yet on the Skyrath Mage, he's only level 3 but there we have it. So much burst damage, the Silence will come out now and with all that slow the access that should be a kill and it is easy pick off. In the mid we actually have the Earthshaker still being there waiting for something to happen. Oh, and they get a nice kill here, maybe on J4, but there is also March of the Machines. The right clicks are coming through. The Fisher, oh, what a nice Fisher. Oh, actually, no, he's landing here on this side. I thought he was there. That would have been bad because he would have gotten all those ticks, but now the Mirana silenced, plus, of course, rockets and laser. Easy go. Necro trying to get out, and no, there's no stun by J4. He didn't even guess with the Fisher, it just came online. So that's another bad feed away for Screen Squad. Giving Power Rangers here a free kill lead. Oh, but bottom, just a cat, of course. This time, no ultimate. There's the Vortex doing a lot of damage already, but Batman already being out of mana. Oh, is that enough with the stick charges? There's an arrow flying. It's gift, it gives them at least vision, but he still makes it out, and the boar is slowing him. I can't believe it, but just a cat is actually making it out here. Those sticks. Stick is just the best item in the game, it's no secret, but yeah, nicely placed, beautifully done by Chizuket here. So in the end, the two supports are heading back, but I know it's it's looking good for Power Rangers, they're not just having the kill lead, also look what the racer is doing here, Moon, so much harass on ZXC, and yeah, he's just going and going and going, trying to bait out that time walk. To be honest, I think he should have used the time walk there instantly, but in the end the racer is getting here 150 damage pretty much. So ZXC has to be careful. No point in backtrack, two points in time lock. I, I don't know if I like that to be honest. Like that one point in backtrack sometimes really saves your life if you're lucky, if you really dodge the big nukes. But let's see. Seven minutes in and I wonder when Power Rangers is calling for attack. Because they also have like a lineup that can definitely just go as four, go for the towers as soon as they can. We have to also see, of course the core items on Shachlo are pretty important. He has bottle as well as the soaring now and 700 gold on top of it. Which means, yeah, 1300, 1250 away from the BOTs and yeah, let's see. Screen Squad, uh, Screen Squad I always say, Screen himself. He's trying to get some XP now. R pretty low on the Mirana to be honest. Like level three. Maybe he's gonna pick up level four here top. But I don't know. Now we have some. Yep, Necroman. Necroman is drawing on the map because they know that there's ancient pulling going on. This might be. Yep, this might be a triple stack. And the Tinker. Tinker's already in position to go and get that right after he cleaned up this wave. So let's see. Oh, there the Sand King has been seen by the illusions of the Earthshaker. That was a nice little scouting rune for him, illusion rune top. I don't know, ZXC is level 6, they could go for something, but oh, in the meantime, Storm dying again. Same combination, this time level 3 axes plus the primal roar and of course the damage here with the silence of uh, FNG. Easy kill, but maybe we have something top, but first of all, they're getting some damage stolen. Not the best time to go for the chrono initiation. And I don't know, like I'm, I'm still waiting for it. Slander is there, no epicenter, he's just level 4. I don't know, Static C. It's a dangerous combination, but then again, there's Earthshaker in the background. Plus, maybe we have some TPs. No, actually, just get no TP. FNG, no TP. Tinker, no TP. So, it's just those two they're dealing with. But then again, the Fisher should buy enough time to actually even survive the Chrono. On Moon, that is, at least. Unless they get both in there. But either way, we have now Necroman in the mid using the level 1 Exorcism the first time. Trying to get some damage done on that tower. I mean, it's a tier 1 tower, no back to protection, but yep, Cliff has been used, and therefore the exorcism is gonna go into, yeah, pretty much nothing. Like, he will do some tower damage, yes. Cryptom also coming out, but I don't know if there's a nice fissure in the March of the Machines, like this one, and the Mystic Flare, and silence, and wow, so much magic and nuke. So, in the end, Yep, Necroman going down. It's 6-1 here at the moment. Power range is looking good. Le as I said, level like in level one, I say, game one. They they didn't look so good in the laning stage. Now the laning stage is definitely on their side. Like easily won. We can we can definitely say Jessica won his lane. Moon won his lane. In the mid it was fairly equal, but now with this kill on Necroman, I think we can also talk about the Tinker. Definitely winning here. He also got that kill. He's cleaning up that last neutral. Actually, he's not even doing that, but he is gonna get up. Yeah, he's gonna get the BOTs right now. BOTs are in the courier. 
and therefore, yep, easy going. I have to see what's next. 10 minute mark, just hit. We look at the net worth and look at this Moon, Shachlo, and Jessica, the top three. Now, okay, actually, <laughs> Necroman, they're still battling for place three, the number three position here on the net worth, but I don't know. Maybe now we see something. Batman and Screen, they are smoked. They might find a support here, like FNG. Oh, is there, for example, arrow, 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 the storm coming in. There's the vortex, arrow following up. It should be enough for this kill, but is there any follow-up? It is enough for this kill, and this is also, yep, it's a dominating. I didn't even realize that the Skyref was already dominating, so that's some tasty gold. That's 500 gold. Exorcism being used as well, and Shachlo, oh god, he has to be careful. But there's a primary roll on two people as well as a Fisher. Negative earn shot, so the Mirana is definitely going down. Oh, there's a Chrono here on J4. He can't really do anything at the same time here. Batman is going to get the last hit, but oh, ZXZ, the Tinker is actually going to get him a lot of, a lot of kills here for Shachlo. He's getting a double kill. Faceless Void and of course short before the Mirana like the rocket hit him the negative earn charge would have finished him off there as well and Power Range is instantly capitalizing on this decent fight I have to say they're going for the mid of course yep we have a new hawk they're driving out screen and there's arrow not connecting on anything cliff being used in the mid but there's still there's three creeps left of the creep wave and they're just chipping away that tower step by step. Crypt Swarm now pulling away the creep wave, but there's the concussive shot. And oh, Axis. He wanted to go for the Axis, but Slender being instantly silenced, so they can't really do anything but the silence. Uh, the silence, I say, the deny. The deny is coming through. Necroman getting that tower denied. But I don't think it matters too much for Power Rangers. They had a decent game so far. Tower is down. And I mean, in the end, they work towards like getting maybe even next to tier 1 bottom. Just getting that position around Roshan conquered. But let's see. Maybe we have a go here on Faces Void with a nice stun. That would make it happen. Oh, let's see. Invisibility rune. It's scouting out everything. And Moon. Moon is coming in. And there's the Mystical Flare. Getting them both. And Shachlo also coming in. He already has a blink dagger done. They've been just obliterated by this damage. Slander dying. He had the Sitcher on it. And... Whoa, 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 this really hurt. The seal amplifying all that damage, it's... That really looks bad. Now the tier 1 tower is, of course, in danger. We have in the midst, I don't know, maybe Necro is going to use that exorcism. Maybe not. Let's see. In the meantime, we have Batman pushing the tower, but hey, in comparison, like, tier 1 tower already down, and in the mid, I guess they accept that tier 1 and want to trade it maybe for a tier 2. Batman top. Oh, he's actually silenced. And oh, this burst damage by the Tinker. Just some more clicks. No, but oh, the Arcane Bolt. The Arcane Bolt is flying. Does he have enough charges? He's trying to TP out. He should have TP'd instantly, but oi, oi, oi. The Arcane Bolt is flying. He's getting that kill. If it wasn't. Oh, we have a Chrono here in bottom. But just a get. He still has the Primal Roar. He has to get the Primal Roar out, but he was stunning Necromant instead of the other three. So in the end, it's two people going down. Nice Chrono here under the tier 2 tower. So finally, Screen Squad is fighting back with the combination they have. Necroman, the Exorcism didn't even tick anything through by the time that, yeah, by the time that Exorcism started to do something, the two heroes were already dead. But of course, they can use that residual Exorcism to go for something more. The problem is, it's running out by the time they reach the tier one tower, and that means March of the Machine spam, and with that, that means meh. Not really a good opportunity to go for and the problem is Shuffle is spamming now of course the rocket oh but there's an arrow it's not connecting on anything Shuffle was already back here in the fountain and the J4 is hiding somewhere in the right corner so now we have a double TP top okay they say like hey guys they're bottom so let's go top <laughs> is that Dondo playing Tinker? No, it's definitely not Danny playing the Tinker, but Shachlo, he's doing so far a decent job, like nice mid lane. Of course, everything was by the help of the supports, but still, he got the farm, fast BOTs, fast like core items as in the soaring and the, the bottle, and also the blink dagger, like once he had the BOTs, he had so fast farm. So everything came out so fast. Now ZXC, Batman, as well as Screen, they are trying to push here, but Tinker is coming in on. Oh god! The Mystical Flare, Echo Slam as well, Screen, he has to go out. He's trying to use 
I don't know. Yeah, he's getting away with that Moonlight Shadow, but at the same time, do we have a fight top? There is Necroman absolutely alone, but he has to be careful as well. The Primer Wall would be really dangerous to him. As long as that Moonlight Shadow is up, it's all good, but I don't know. They still get a lot of tower damage here. As long as that Siege Engine is there, there is no backdoor protection. So is he trying to deny it? Yes, he was trying to deny it, but they drive him out, and this is a guaranteed tower kill for Razor. He's also going to be happy. Let's see what that Razor is actually going for. He went... Wow. Oh, <laughs> I love those items. Nothing really finished. Everything started. Nothing really finished. Stick, like magic... Uh, uh, the wand is not finished. He has a hood, but at the same time also a vid booster. Uh, Ring of Vasilos and Bracers. So I can imagine he's going to finish up at least some of those items. I assume. But I don't know. Jumps, that would be a bit late. Then again, having one jumps in your team might not be too bad. Finishing the uh, the pipe would be, of course, interesting. Because there is definitely some magical damage you can absorb on Screen Squad's side. With the pipe, it would make it even harder for those guys. And I don't know. Let's see. March of the Machine spam is coming out here by Shachlo. There is an arrow scouting, but whoa, it's not hitting anything. He actually plinked through the arrow here on the other side, but... Yep, they all have to go back. Even Batman just going really, really low just by those March of the Machine spam. And yep, they might get the tier 1 tower, but look in the mid. There is Power Rangers, three people getting the tier 2. So they're definitely doing much better trades. And maybe now they even rotate bottom. Who knows? They could if they wanted to. There is some Tinker spam coming through. And it seems like Screen doesn't want to commit. They have to go back because Power Rangers is saying, OK, guys, you want tier 1. We get tier 3 instead, and this is a much better trade. And therefore, tower surviving in the nigh range. If Tinker wants to, he could take it. And yep, he's actually TPing there. And look at it. There we go. Two more hits. Three more hits, actually. Bam. And whoa, someone is complaining that I didn't update the score. Yes, I will do that right now. Score is power range is 1 0 SS. There we go. Updated. Oh, wait, actually, Moobot is not responding at the moment. So, I can't. I don't know. Moobot is doing weird stuff. Theoretically, it should work. But oh, we have to go here with the Moonlight Shadow on Moon. There's the epicenter. It's being channeled. It actually, yeah, it got through even though the primary war came. So, Moon, he's very likely to go down but in the end they might actually turn this around there's a chrono on two so plus the arrow fng is definitely not getting alive out of here oh but there's a gem on the crown the fisher actually got one kill there and i don't know chisel cat is he going down the exorcism it's already running out soon and we have j4 here oh j4 he has to be careful. There is another Fisher. They're still hunting Chisokat, but the Chisokat is getting the kill here on screen on the Mirana. And of course the Tinker even getting the Storm Spirit down in the end. Yep, Death Prophet gets the J4 kill, but it's it's still a weird trade. Is that gem? Who took that gem? Oh wait, did they take that? Oh my god, this is of course really, really bad. The gem, the gem was dropped here, somewhere in this area, and then they chased down this... And someone died here that was Screen himself, and he dropped the gem a second time. So Power Rangers, they conquered the gem back. So pretty nice, and it's pretty amazing that Beastmaster actually made it out of there. And we, again, we have the core items coming out here for Power Rangers. We have the mech done. Uh, the, the Razor is going to be the... Yep, he's going to have the drums, so we have that aura as well. Then what else do we have? The hood, of course, the first step into... The direction of getting another pipe even done. Tinker, we already talked about it. He got all his core cool items. And I'm not a huge fan of it, but look at it, guys. He is a Bloodstone Tinker. I don't know. As I said, like, not a huge fan of Bloodstone Tinkers. But let's see. I mean, in this game, it might actually be quite okay. Because at the moment, they're just rolling. They're getting kills. But he has to be careful, of course. A Tinker and the Chrono, and it could be already done. And losing those Bloodstone charges is not really helping. At least he gets some XP, some region, so he can really spam all the time. But as I said, not a huge fan. Let's see what's happening next, because Power Rangers, they are already here in the enemy jungle. And they might actually just risk that go in the mid. I can, f I figure the uh, Beastmaster is working towards a dagger. Maybe has a dagger soon. Oh, there's a go here on ZXZ. He's so far silenced and wow, on the edge of the plasma field. Getting that kill already. 
Batman already has to go out and well that was a definitely a clean kill that was really the edge of the plasma field absolutely maximum damage coming on the poor void there and no luck with the backtrack finally he has one point in backtrack but 10% is 10% you could have 25 if you wanted to and look at it top power range is already saying hello to the tier 3 tower it is time to go high crown and Oh, Necromant, there they go in Chisaket. There's the stun, the stun, but not connecting on Chisaket. It connects on Moon, but look at the damage of Necromant. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. He has to go back with his Exorcism and in the end. FNG is going in, but oh, wonderful. Primal Roar on three. On the other side, we have a Chrono, but the Chrono doesn't do anything. Now, J4, really, really low, but in the end, Batman is getting out. Slander, negative earn charge. It's still enough to get out. Necromant should be fine. He's getting healed now by the Necro, but in the end, it was a one for two trade. A bit tower damage done. Okay, but oh, Tinker with the... Oh, with the Hawk. Just TPing in now. Necromant has to go back already. He silenced Jatlo here, but with the epicenter absolutely off target and the Fisher just finishing the entire thing. Actually, it wasn't even the Fisher. The rocket there just finished it. And now that means three people down. Chrono also down for quite considerate time. Like, look at it. Two minutes. Yep, Tinker just coming, giving them the backup they need. And oh, there's a chase here on the Marana. He's coming in and easy go, easy kill. Silence here on Shaklo. He's getting stunned, but wow, with the seal. And of course, all that damage by Shaklo. That is a level 2 Dagon. That was already enough. No backtrack luck on the void. And there we have the GG call. Power Range is taking game number 2 as well. That makes it a 2 0 win here on Power Ranges. What a game. Like, absolutely amazing. I mean, Screen Squad. They just couldn't stop them. Like once the Tinker came online, and to be honest, my MVP is really just a cat. Like just a cat on on the Beastmaster made a lot of things possible. His ganks with FNG, his ganks with Shachlo, and once Shachlo had then like access, of course, to BOTs and Dagger and all that stuff, he also came with the Hawk all the time in Moon. I guess he just had a tanky role in this game. And Earthshaker, yeah, J4, nice fishes as such. But yeah, I think Jessicat and Shachlo, they, they really did the best plays. Either way, guys, that's it uh, for now. I actually have to look in the, the schedule what else is coming up. But I think, I think, I think, I think there should be a game on Hefla TV 2, casted by Coucher at the moment. Uh, Balkan Bears versus... Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, it's on Half Life TV too. So Balkan Bears, they're gonna, it's gonna be casted in 24 minutes. But I'm not sure if they're already done with a KPG game. So maybe I'm gonna cast that game here on Half Life TV one. So stay tuned and just check the JD side uh, for new stuff. Either way, I'm out for like 20 minutes and then we see which game is on which channel. And for the time being, you can just swap to Half Life TV two and give those guys some, uh, some views. So thank you, thanks for tuning in. Check out our YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, of course, you always get the news, the VODs, they will be uploaded shortly after the game. And of course, give us a follow here on our, our English channels. Have Lamok out, and see you in approximately 20 minutes.